Okay, so in this video we're going to do some number theory. We're going to find the highest power of 5 that divides 100 factorial. So basically what we're looking for is 100 factorial divided by 5 to the power of k. And what we're looking for is the integer k. So when we divide this, we must get an integer as well. So k must be an integer, and the answer to this must be an integer. So how are we going to go about finding that? Well, 100 factorial, for a start off, this is 158 digits long. So if you write this number out, it's 158 digits, and with 24 trailing zeros. So before we even start, this number is massive. If I was to write this number out, it would probably fill the board here. So to do this by brute force, it's not going to work. So what we need to work out is, is what 100 factorial is for a start. So 100 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 da, 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 times 97 times 98 times 99 times 100 and that's our 100 factorial what we do know is is that when we multiply a number let's say for example we can put in here times 5 just just to help us along here we know if we multiply by 5 we know when we divide it we have a multiple of 5 so there'll be a number in there but when we divide it by 5 it gives us a whole number so if we multiply by 10, by 15, by 20, we know that these are going to add to helping us find a number that divides by 5. So what we can say is we find all the multiples of 5 that to give us into the 100. So we've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and so on, all the way up to 95 and 100. So what we're interested in here is all of these digits here within this product here. Now, interesting to see here is 25 is five squared, whereas these ones here, their prime, uh, prime factorization, this one would be five to the power of one times two squared. This one here is five to the one times three, and this is five to the one times two, and so on. This one here will be 5 to the power of 1 times 19. And this will be 5 squared times 2 squared. So we've got some 5s that appear twice and some 5s that only appear once. So we need a summation formula. So what we can say is we go from x equals 1 to infinity. And then the number we're interested in is the number that's used for the factorial. So we'll just call that the number n, and then we'll divide that by the prime number, which is in the denominator. We'll just call that p, and it will be p to the power of x. And that will be, so it will be a normal bracket, it will be a floor function. Because what we're interested in is only integers. So we need a floor function to break this down as an integer. So what we now know, we can say is n is 100 so that's the factorial number we're interested in and the prime number we're interested in is 5 so p equals 5 okay so looking at this number here our first one is n so we just change the n to so that's 100 so our n is 100 so I type in 100, and then we divide that by p to the power of 1. That's the first one in here, and p is 5. So 5 to the power of 1, and that's a floor function. So 100 divided by 5 to the power of 1, I'll just write that down here. That is 20. 520 is 100. Pretty straightforward. As it's a summation formula, our next one enclosed in the floor function will be 100 divided by 5 squared. Now 5 squared we know is 25. 100 divided by 25 is 4. 
So our flow function here at the moment is not, not looks like it's not needed. But when we come to the next one, x equals three, so plus 100 divided by five cubed, we'll see here five cubed is 125, 100 divided by 125 is four fifths, but four fifths is less than one. So in the floor function, that will become zero. And then obviously if we go five to the power four, that will keep going to zero and zero on forever and ever. So if we add up these numbers here, we have 20 plus four, so that's gonna give us 24. So if you work out along the line here, all the way to 100, five to the power of one, there'll be five, uh, 20 of those along the line, including four, which are square numbers. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, going along the line, that'll be 20 digits, of which four will be square numbers. So we'll have five squared, which is 25. We'll have 50, which is five squared times two. There'll be a 75, which is five squared times three. And of course here we've got the 100, which is five squared times two squared. So that shows us where the four comes from. And the 20 will be all the multiples of five along there. Okay, so therefore here we can say that our value for K is five, is 24. So basically 100 factorial divided by five to the power of 24, which is also a very, very big number. Put in the comments down below if you can tell me how many digits that is and how many trailing zeros there's gonna be. This will yield an integer. Any number bigger than that, will not yield an integer for us. Okay.